Hi everyone, welcome back to La Liga Lowdown. Hope you had a good weekend. Have you subscribed to our channel yet? If not, why not? Why don't you just do it straight away? Click on the button and it's done. It takes two seconds. Now, we hope that you also enjoyed the first part of our interview with Luis Garcia as we previewed Barcelona against Atletico Madrid, the big game in La Liga over the weekend. If you haven't seen it, don't worry. We'll put a link at the end of this video. Now, in part two of our interview, we discuss a lot of different things, including the injury which ended his time at Anfield, his return to Atletico and the players that he played with, his time with the Spain national side as well, plus... At the end of this video, we give Lucho a present. Find out what that is. We started it all off by asking him just how difficult it was to settle into life at Liverpool. Tell us a little bit about what Liverpool was like for tapas bars and Spanish no restaurants. Much. No much, <laughs> I can tell you that. When I arrived to Liverpool, I mean, um, <clears throat> of course you arrive there and you're happy, new culture, uh, it's cold, but I remember, I, 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 like if it was uh, yesterday, uh, I remember my first, um, uh, I, I, I buy an apartment, so I was for two, two weeks more or less in the hotel, so I found an apartment, and we, we rented for, for a few months, and I remember the first day, waking up to go to training, and move the curtains, it was that, you know, rain, little rain that it mm. comes all cloudy. Oh, England it was, specializes in that. Yeah, it, oh, was, yeah. it was August. I mean, I can <laughs> tell you, it was August. So I said, okay, uh, it's, it's one day. Second day, it was two weeks, the same exactly weather. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, this is going to be tough. <laughs> so city, city was okay, but um, not much to do, not many restaurants, not many. I mean, it was... Who, who found it, it the toughest out of all of the, the, the group of, of Spanish signers? I, th I can tell you, uh, Josemi. Oh, really? For semi, yeah, because at the end you adapt. Uh, we, we learned our English, it, was, it wasn't good, I, I have to tell you, but uh, we'll, we managed to learn a little bit. We have a few um, classes and then we move around and at the end you learn a little bit. But I remember Josemi was the strongest of us, but he used to try to live the same way like in Spain. So finish the uh, training, go home, have lunch and have a nap. Mm -hmm. A nap of two or three hours yeah, and yeah. then it was four o'clock. The day in England at four o'clock is it's off. over. It's yeah, over. yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it was uh, at, until four o'clock. Then he couldn't sleep at night until one o'clock and go to train and like this. It was one day and another one. Yeah. He used to say, "Listen, we go for dinner. What time? At seven? No, at seven. I'm not having dinner. I'm staying because I'm gonna have lunch." Yeah. <laughs> His body clock is all over the place. Oh, yeah, exactly. So he struggled <laughs> a little bit and uh, well, but it's, it was for semi. So listen, I think you know the football on the pitch will have compensated yeah. for all of the issues with the weather. Sorry about that. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, that was such a special campaign and, and Liverpool obviously have this relationship with the European Cup as an English yeah. side um, and, and the Champions League in that year. Um, what about though your relationship with Chelsea Football Club and <laughs> <laughs> what you managed to achieve against them in a couple of years? I guess yeah. you're probably not Mr. Popular. No, uh, I guess Chelsea. no, I guess no. I'm still not, um, not uh, getting along with the Chelsea fans. Even though there I go some places, well, these young players uh, or young people, um, the new generation that don't remember that much that game, that they come and they take a picture with the badge of Chelsea there. I say, okay, maybe one day you <laughs> you will see it. But um, no, I, I guess that season, yeah, like you said, um, it was all about games. Uh, Wednesday, Tuesdays, uh, Saturdays, uh, Boxing Day. There was so many games. So at the end, you forget about your your lifestyle a little bit. You go, you rest, you go to train, and you go to rest again because mm. there were so many. And then they they, they come the the Chelsea games that um, they were always very tough. I think we didn't manage to win one single game in the whole season against them. And we played, I can tell you, like eight times. Mm. We played in the League Cup, we played in the FA Cup, we played in the Champions League, we played in the league. So, but per two is like eight, ten yeah, times, yeah, and yeah. we couldn't manage to to win one game. I think we we draw the first one in Champions League. Yeah, and I think one at home in because we lost against them in the final of um, Karlinka. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, no, no more. And then Champions League semi final arrived, and we managed to go through the final. Just one game, one goal, and mm. well, I had the chance to score that goal that um, uh, turned up uh, to be one of the most important in my career. Yeah, and you celebrate this goal on Instagram, don't yeah. you? you uh, yeah. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about what you get up to. No, I think it, that started the last two years ago that, um, well, we used to, uh, people used to call it the, um, the goals goal. And yeah. I received like a picture, even three, four years ago uh, from a guy 
with a costume like a ghost and Garcia and Namazan, and you know, it was, it, I, it, I found it very funny. So I thought, okay, it's costume arriving very soon, uh, Halloween. <clears throat> so let's do something different. And I took a picture of uh, me scoring a goal over the line <laughs> with a, <laughs> with a <laughs> ghost costume and, uh, and uh, people liked it. So last this Chelsea this fans year, like it. Yeah. Did you get much response? <coughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of stick <laughs> from the Chelsea fan, but uh, I think it's fun. I, I know that they, they, they don't get it like uh, in, a, in a bad way. Yeah. And I think it was, it was a fun moment. The injury that you suffered uh, when you were at Liverpool, the ACL, had that not happened, do you think you may well have stayed at Anfield a bit longer? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know because I was struggling. Well, my family was struggling uh, mm. about being there three years and it was tough, but um, I, I probably, yes, I had two more years. People start talking about um, um, signing a new, a new deal. And uh, to be honest, um, uh, that game I shouldn't even have played because we played, <coughs> I remember that we played in um, Tottenham yep. the week before. I scored the goal. My last goal for Liverpool was that one, one nil against Tottenham, uh, one high lane. Uh, we got the three points and um, I finished tired because uh, it, it rained so much. It was a very hard uh, game. So we played. Uh, Carlin Cup in uh, midweek and he was playing uh, Mark Gonzalez in my position so I was on the bench wasn't even going to play I shouldn't even be on the bench yeah but suddenly um, uh, Mark Gonzalez got injured uh, 30 minutes from the first half and I have to go go in the into the game game was like those crazy games yeah. no one wants to to be there but it was against Arsenal so it was a good game and we lost 6-3 th right. so it was like a crazy one and in one of the moments, those that you are angry because of the situation, because the game is not going well, and I jump and I fell badly, and well, I, I did my ACL, and mm. yeah, it was a pity. I don't know because I was in a fantastic moment, and I felt so good, confident, and um, well, uh, also, I mean, stole my uh, career at the national team because it, <laughs> we were playing the qualification for 2008. They managed to, to win it at the end, and, and yeah. well, it was uh, all a pity, but. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was at the end of the season we played the Champions League final. I couldn't. I was there, but I couldn't yeah. be even on the bench because I had only five months recovery from the ACL, and mm. it took me like seven. So yeah, it was. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I will say that yes, I will have to stay for a for a bit more because mm. um, um, the things were going so well, and and my relationship with the with the uh, boss was good. So mm. yeah, probably will have signed a, a new contract, but. Um, and when I did my ACL, I went back to Spain to do the recovery. I went to Barcelona and then family started liking it there. Sure. And we said, OK, we'll, we'll have a, a thought about it. And then we spoke with uh, Rafa and he said, OK, if there is um, a good deal coming up and uh, we'll talk about it. And well, Fernando Torres was on the, on the yeah. way to Liverpool. Yeah, and, and we, you were on the way back to Atletico. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I suppose they got a, an all right player. An I, all right think, player. Yeah, I think hey, they did they, well. They, yeah. they, lo they lost a good player too, but uh, why was it? Difficult or more difficult, more challenging on your return to Atletico. Yeah, because at the end, when you're right, this this kind of injuries is is, is very complicated. You mm. you people say, oh, how long it was until you play? I, I think it was seven months until I came into the game. I remember it was a precision game in 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 Holland, and um, it was seven months when I started because uh, it was the precision. So I did the all precision after being without training for two months. And uh, they say, yeah, five, six, seven months, but uh, it depends of, of the player. And it took me a while to, to uh, have again the confidence on the knee, the speed again that I had before. And, mm. uh, and well, it, it wasn't easy. And I arrived to Atletico Madrid that is quite demanding. We were playing Champions League also. Um, it was with a fantastic team. If I tell you a team, you will say, uh, right now Atletico Madrid is quite a very good team. Yeah. But uh, Simao Sabrosa, uh, Forlan, uh, Kun Agüero, Maxi Rodriguez, I think it's quite a very good uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. top four. Yeah. So these so days we'd have like a kind of an acronym for that, like M yeah. MSN or BBC. Exactly. We would try and find something for that. Some, something like that, because <laughs> I mean, for Lan, Kun Agüero, yeah. you see what they've done after. Yeah. Uh, for Lan Finis, uh, top scorer in the league twice, mm -hmm. uh, Simao Sabrosa, international for Portugal, yeah. Maxi for Argentina, and Kun Agüero, of course, yeah. we all know him. So it was very tough to get into the into the team uh, regularly. So I started playing cup, league. I, I started scoring a, a few goals and mm. then uh, getting a, f a few more minutes. And then um, the manager that was there, Aguirre, uh, left after one year. And he came a, a, a different coach that had a different mentality and didn't help me that much in mm -hmm. uh, in the second year to adapt again to the team. And well, at the end is the, the way it is. I move. I have to move because uh, at the end, if you don't play, um, your career can can stop very very easily. Yeah. And I was on my thirties, so 
it was a difficult moment. It was a shame that the injury had such a, an impact on your career. And the ACL is always such a, a, such a one, tricky yeah. injury, a isn't one, it? Yeah. But before then, um, let's talk about the national team briefly because, well, you played in the 2006 World yeah. Cup. And before then, a, a memorable day against Slovakia. Yeah. Um, tell us about that hat-trick. Yeah, th th that was even my first uh, starting with, uh, for, the, for the national team because I played, yeah, I played a few of the games. I was on the squad for quite a while, like two, three months before. We played uh, play in different places, but it was, I was one on the bench and one on the stand. One on the bench and one on the stand. I was thinking, oh my God, it's not going to arrive. And, and suddenly, Luis Aragonés, that I, he was my coach in Atletico Madrid before, in 2003, decided to in probably one of the most important uh, games for, 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 for our side because it was the, the, the playoff to go to the, uh, the, to the World Cup. Uh, we have to win if we wanted to be there. Yeah. Decided to, to fit me in and well, um, I, I managed to score three goals in that game. We won 5-1 and um, it was quite amazing, amazing day. So yeah, um, it was yeah important one. Tell you what, Luis Aragones, what a call, <laughs> what a call. <laughs> To give Luis Garcia his international first start, was it? Was it wasn't yeah. your debut? It was your first start. Yeah, first start, yeah, first yeah. start. Yeah, first in a playoff game it, to it, reach. The it, it was always that kind of manager. Right. He used to take a little bring, risk. Yeah, bringing something from no one was expecting. We're gonna do that, and he done it after in 2007 when we finished the World Cup. 2007, we went to play in uh, Northern Ireland. We lost. Uh, uh, th by three goals, yeah. and um, he decided to make a change and he removed some of uh, the players. So all the players, he, he tried to do something different. Yeah. And he said, "Okay, I'm gonna stay, but I'm gonna do it my way." And yeah. uh, well, he start picking different players, start picking players who were not even on the on the list for the European yeah. European Championship. And yeah. uh, well, at the end, look at that. Yeah, and look what happened after mm -hmm. that. Um, Lucha, you've brought a little present for us. Well, we're not going to keep this. This is yours. <laughs> Please, thank you. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going to give this back. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so explain this. Let's hold it in the middle there. Yeah, right. This so one. this is from when? This one is uh, 2003. Okay. This is my first. Because at the end, uh, for me, I, I signed for Barcelona twice, if you know. Yes, I left course. when I was 21. And I, I moved to uh, Valladolid, then Toledo, then Tenerife, back to Valladolid, and then I signed it back to Barcelona. Yeah. And then signed back, uh, sign, sign, sign again for Atletico Madrid, and yes, then signed yes. back for Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. And this one finally was the one who I wore as a first team player. Right. And, um, it's quite Did you wonder whether you'd ever get this shirt? Because, you know, if you're going from Barcelona away on loan, and then you go to Atletico, then you come back. Yeah. Did you ever think, oh, will I ever make yes. this for sure of course of course when i left uh, i remember that it was um um a coach who told me uh, i know you're leaving but you will uh, you will be back very soon ah. and after a couple of years it was a referee uh, it was after in in the manager and um, board of barcelona then mallorca then betis and um, he told me that and, and well after a couple of years i was thinking i think uh, it's getting tough to, to yeah. get back to, to Barcelona, but well, at the end I managed to, to, yeah. to play for the Barcelona. It's my, my team. When I was a kid, my dream was to play for the first team of Barcelona, and okay. well, I managed to, to play for, for them, and uh, yeah. quite happy yeah, to the day that I. Such a special thing to wear the yeah. Belgrano, isn't it? It is. Fantastic. It is, That's great. Thank you for showing us that. Nice um, Luis, finally, uh, I've got a present for you. Really? Yeah, I do. It's here, um, and it is a cocktail book <laughs> now obviously we know that the, the famous chant Luis Sangria at least I, let me get this right Luis Garcia drink sangria, Luis sangria from Barcelona to bring us joy he's five foot seven he's football heaven although you're not five foot seven are you you're taller than a that taller, you're a bit yeah. taller than that so that doesn't work um, and of course uh, please don't take our Luis away well actually I've thought about this very carefully because it's this is not just uh, about cocktails. You've got different types of cocktails here. So, for example, you can have uh, sangria with pomegranate in it, or maybe <laughs> you can have sangria with hibiscus or something else. Plus, I know that you're a man of um, regime and exercise, and you I take do. that very seriously. 150 calories. Look at that. That's good. So, good to know. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Thank if you, you want to much. make sangrias for the rest of your life, you've got a few options there. And if not, nice one. you can make a few other things. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. That, 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 cost, that cost me all of three pounds. So there, there you, you go. go. Sometimes you can find <laughs> the value. Um, Lucho, mira, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. Thank really you appreciate you uh, giving us the time. And um, good luck with all your projects going forward. Thank you very much. Oh, you too. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. 
Huge thanks to Luis Garcia for sparing an hour of his time for us to chat with him about all sorts of different things. The first big name we've brought you on La Liga Lowdown and hopefully plenty more interviews like that to come on this YouTube channel in the coming weeks and months. Just a couple of things before we go though, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Just do it right now. Plus, we've got our first emoji challenge on Twitter, which will be available tomorrow. That's Wednesday. So just give us a follow at La Liga Lowdown. And our podcast is available to download right now. All of the details are in the description to this video. So just have a look. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time here on La Liga Lowdown.